So we are in Senegal. Senegal is a beautiful country. Here is a map. Lovely place, lovely people, great culture. They have a culture of wrestling, African wrestling. Very, very interesting. You should see this. It's amazing. And these guys get paid. This is traditional wrestling, but they have made it such a standard to encourage the youth into being masculine. And it's just amazing. These guys get paid. They really get paid. So we have history of Senegal was colonized by France for many years, was freed in the 1960s. But many experts feel like even though France left Senegal and many other African countries, they never really left because these countries were still ruled some ways as per expert by France. Here we have a man named Ousmane Sonko, who's been one of the biggest opposition leaders for many years. He has something to say about France. Let's watch. It is high time for France to lift its knee off our neck and put an end to this unjust oppression. Centuries of misery, human trafficking, colonization, and neocolonization have caused immeasurable suffering. It's time to put an end to this cycle of oppression. It's high time for France to leave us alone. It's time for France to take a cue from its European neighbors and learn a valuable lesson in independence. Germany is the leading economic power in Europe, significantly surpassing France, which is ranked as the third or fourth largest economic power globally. Germany does not exploit any country, any colony. I can mention Italy, I can mention Spain, who had colonies before but who do not exploit anyone, who do not interfere, who do not impose leaders in their former colonies. Very interesting point. So many experts feel like France still has a grip on many African countries that they colonize. They say the proof is in a pudding. If you see some of these African countries, especially West Africa, they still use what they call the CFA franc. The CFA franc, it's the f money that was created for the use of African nations that were colonized by France. And this currency is actually printed in France today. So people in the independent countries in Africa still use a currency that is printed by a former colonizer. Now the question remains, are these countries free or not? Let's go. On what grounds does France believe it can continue to impose leaders on us and make choices on our behalf? This must come to an end. Many people also believe that France imposes leaders on African nations that were colonized by them. Meaning if a leader doesn't move in a way that France lacks it, they're going to find some sort of a situation so he can be toppled. We have many examples of that. And uh, that's it to stop, says Usma Sonko from Senegal. And the emerging Africa, the African youth, the African elites, and the African diaspora all stand united in saying no, it cannot continue any longer. France's hypocrisy is evident and pervasive in daily life. Let's examine the cases of Mali and Chad as prime examples of this hypocrisy. In Chad, where the constitutional process has been interrupted, France applauded and its president visited to officially consecrate the new king's coronation ceremony. In Mali, where it is not the constitutional process that has been interrupted, but the transition process, France has condemned and even packed up its things to say that it is leaving Mali. That's hypocrisy. It's the double standard. It is the double language that France employs in its dealings with Africa. During our questioning of Mr. Jean-Yves Le Drian regarding the situation in Ivory Coast and France's decision to allow a third term, he provided a clear explanation. He stated that while he accepted the third term for Ouattara, he refuses it for Belarus. He emphasized that France has condemned the situation in Belarus and has actively encouraged the European Union to do the same. Le Drian explains that in Belarus, millions protested, unlike Ivory Coast, where there were no mass demonstrations on the streets. Well, that's very interesting. Ivory Coast, a beautiful country. Here is a map. Lovely people, some of the best places in Africa. Surely, uh, you'll hear a lot of people say that Ivory Coast is the Paris of West Africa. I don't know why they choose Paris. Maybe because some people believe Paris is a beautiful place. So Ivory Coast, as per many people, is the Paris of West Africa. Many West Africans go sit and live in Ivory Coast, like home, with no issue. They some of the best beautiful people you'll find in that side of the world. Now, in Ivory Coast, the president named Ouattara 
was trying to go for a third term. He was normally authorized to do only two, but was trying to go three times. But because Ouattara is a very good friend of the French, uh, French did not get very upset about that. But on the other hand, the Belarusian president trying to go for a third term, this man says uh, it was unacceptable. They even pushed the European Union to stand against that because it was not acceptable. Now, why the double standard? Why in Ivory Coast they can tolerate that, but in Belarus they cannot? Because some experts believe, of course, in Ivory Coast, they still control many things in terms of economy, in terms of decisions. And also, I mean, by the way, you have a president that... You know, he works for us. So we can keep him for three terms, four terms, maybe six or seven, if, yeah, depending on how we feel about that. Let's go. This is how France deals with African issues. Personally, we expect absolutely nothing from France. We desire her to cease meddling in our matters so that the people of Senegal can exercise their freedom of choice rather than being influenced by France's selection of a candidate using the tactics we are aware of. We begin by targeting individuals, adorning them with the Legion of Honor or a similar knightly rank, enlisting them in Masonic lodges and informing them to prepare themselves as they will be next in line. Oh, that's interesting. Now these people get baptized. Interesting, eh? Yeah, have you heard of those stories where they say many African presidents uh, get into Masonic lodges before they become presidents. It's very interesting. You see some of the videos where it's it's quite interesting. I mean, you've never asked questions to understand why these videos are online where some of the presidents in Africa go into Masonic lodges, uh, get involved into secrecy and all that stuff. It's very interesting. That's a good question. I believe everybody should be asking themselves. Even the hypothesis that Macky Sall may not succeed, we know who is being prepared by France. This must come to an end. It will not occur in this manner any longer. Let's be clear. We have absolutely nothing against the French people. In France, both political and citizen voices are rising to hold and express the same discourse as the one I'm currently presenting to you. Oh, interesting. So people in France are also not happy. We're we talking about the everyday people, the average people. So in other words, he's not attacking France. He's just not happy with the elite of France who are trying to control the world, continue to colonize in 2024. For example, the deputies such as Mrs. Frédéric Dumas, who regularly speaks on the platform of the assembly, who regularly writes to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, since she is a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, to raise this unfair behavior of France towards Africa, hold the same speech as us. The same Mr. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, Jean-Paul Lecoq, André Chassin, all deputies, hold the same discourse as us and hundreds and hundreds of other voices. The NGO and yours, like other nonprofit organizations, are doing remarkable work in the same direction. We strongly urge France to listen to the voices that speak to it about our plan for a more collaborative, fairer, and sustainable partnership between Africa and France. Okay, so again, this is very clear, I think. Uh, by now, you should know. If you don't, please go do some research about Ousmane Sonko. Very interesting man. He's 49 years old. Uh, the brand new type of leaders that Africa needs, I believe. I think when you look at Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso, young man taking the lead of the countries. So this man has been very clear, okay? We cannot proceed with a country that is still controlled by colonizers. You cannot say you have a free country when you use money, you use currency that is printed in another country. Matter of fact, if you take the same CFA franc, let's say you take $10,000 worth of CFA franc, you go with the same amount of money to France, they will not take it. If you want to buy something, you want to buy an item, they will not take your CFA franc. You need to have euros that you convert in your country before you take to them. But it is printed in their central bank. Unbelievable. And uh, yeah, he says once he takes power, because he's been blocked many times from, yeah, there have been num numerous accusations. They've accused him of rape. They've accused him of so many things so that he doesn't become president. He also wants all the soldiers and the military bases in Dakar and Senegal from France to leave the country. Same as Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger. And they are afraid to see him move Senegal to the right or to this new direction that most French colonized African countries are taking. Thank you very much, fellas. It's always a great pleasure. Let me know how you feel about this. Usman Sonko, I mean, things have changed in Senegal. We're going to make a video very soon to talk in depth manner about what's happening in Senegal. And I'm sure we're going to all love about it. God bless.